Hi, I made this spiral from this spiral, which was made from just a simple point on the screen. This tutorial shows how to draw in Movie Edit Pro or MEP using a single point. This interesting method was shown in a tutorial in French by Serge Vandeval or Sergio24 on the Magix forum. There are many ways that this can be used. One is to draw animated circular or spiral shapes. The other is to draw animated lines, for example, a route on a map. First you need a bitmap file, or a file with a single circle on it, or some other suitable object. You can create this in a drawing program like Zara, or in MEP itself. I'll make this in Zara first. In Zara Designer Pro, or Photo and Graphics Designer, create a rectangle the size of the full screen format that you're using in MEP. I'm using 1920 wide by 1080 high. This way the mask will come into map at full screen with my object at the selected location and size. Make sure that the rectangle is black. Now create a small filled circle or rectangle of say 35 pixels per side or diameter. Make it white. Center it on the rectangle. and move it upwards close to the top. We'll use this to make the circle or ellipse in map and when we do we'll rotate it about the center point of the rectangle and the small circle will trace an arc or a circle. Now we'll export this everything that is to a JPEG file. I'll call this zero offset circle one and put it in a folder that I can easily find. You may want to save this file and keep it as a base for other masks or overlays. For another example, I'll change the circle to a short line segment. So I'll create a new tab here and I'll copy the rectangle over and create the short line segment. Now I'll center this and I'll export that as a JPEG file and of course to somewhere where I can find it quickly. Now I'm going to add in an arrowhead on the right hand side and I'll export this one as well to the same location with a different name. And finally I'll save this as a Zara type file so that I can use it again later. And now I can get out of Zara and go back to map. If you don't have a drawing program, even though I know that you do, like uh, Windows Paint or Magix Photo Designer that comes with Map Plus, you can create a point file using map. Click on the title tab and select templates, fonts, and insert the first one, ABZ. The title is highlighted, so just press on the point or period key and accept that. Now change the size to 35. Go to Effects, View Animation, Size Position, Center the point, and then drag or move it towards the top. I'll just change the Y setting to 200. Make sure that you have no other image overlaying this. Now place a playback marker somewhere on this and go to File, Export Movie, Single Frame as JPEG or BMP. I'll place it in the same folder but with a name Map Offset.1. I no longer need the title, so I'll delete it. Now I'll go to the same folder under Import and select this last file and drag it onto the timeline. With the object selected, go to Effects, Video Effects, Brightness Contrast, and set the Brightness, Contrast, and Gamma all to 100. Now if everything turns white, that's okay. What we want is the circle to be properly white, otherwise it may have a blue tinge to it. Now select Chroma Key and click on Black. Now we see a nice white point. Next, select Distortion and set Echo to 5. Echo is going to create a point at every frame. Now for the animation. Go to View Animation, Size Position, drag the playback marker to the beginning in the keyframe box if not already there. Place a keyframe by clicking on the keyframe button. Drag the playback marker to the end and now drag the image down and towards the right. Make sure that you're in edit mode, not preview mode, or you won't see the object handles to drag. Press on home, or drag the playback marker on the timeline to the beginning. 
Render this by clicking on the render icon and select the range if you have to. There's nothing else on the timeline, so we're good. When done rendering, click on play or the spacebar. The line progresses. Now that's all there is to the basics of this. As I said, echo makes a point every frame. The smoothness of the line will depend on how fast the point moves. If you want a line with a lot of points on it, you have to increase the speed. So you need to move the keyframe closer to the left end, but I can't see it, so I'll just extend out the length of the object. There, now we can see the keyframe. Now I can drag it to the left. Now we'll render it and play it, and now we see discrete points. To make the line smoother, extend the object to the right by dragging the right side towards the right. Now in the keyframe window, select and drag the keyframe to the right. Render this and play it. Now we see that the line is smoother. Well that's nice, but we want to have the line drawn quicker and we want it smooth. So we go to the next step. We go to File, Export Movie, and select WMV or MPEG or my preference, which is Magic's Movie Format MXV. I'll name this Moving Point 1, and I'll make sure to save it in the same folder as before. Once done, go to Import, and drag the file onto the timeline after the other object. Zoom out to see it all and play it back. Now we want to overlay it on the background and change the speed. I'll insert an image or a video, like a map, onto track 1. Select our track to video, go to effects, video effects, chroma key, and select black. Now we see our video line superimposed on the image on track 1. Play it back. Not bad, huh? Uh, but it's too slow, so just make sure we've selected the animation object, go to effects, video effects, speed, and increase the speed. Before playing it back, you might want to do a render so that it plays back smoothly. Once you've got the render done, play it, and we see that our line goes much faster. But the white line on a pale background doesn't look too good. So let's get something for the background. Find and drag a colored image, like uh, maybe this red background here. Put it on track 3. Select the animation object on track 2. Go to Video Effects, Chroma Key, and select Alpha. Now scrub across that with the playback marker and you'll see we have a nice red line. But uh, we did this blind. What we needed to do was actually do our line on the map in the first place. So let's set that one up. I'll copy the map on track 1 and drag it over to the beginning of our point animation, stretch it out to cover the point animation, and now select our point animation, go up to the effects and size and position and delete the keyframes. Now set the playback marker to the beginning, and in the preview window, drag the point image to have the point at a starting location that we see on the map right there and we want to place a keyframe right there. Good, now we'll just drag the playback marker about halfway along and move our point in the preview window to the intersection of the roads right there and it automatically places a keyframe so we'll move towards the end and now we'll drag the point down towards the bottom right there a little bit on the road and we're done. So we can scrub over that one and we'll see that it's making points on the road. Now we need to render this up or those points are going to show up in what we export. So I set the range and we'll render it. And once the rendering is done, we can just scrub across it to see that nice smooth line. Now we'll export that one. Uh, but first of all, I have to mute whatever's on track one. We don't want that. All right. And whoops, better render it again because I put a couple of points there. And once that's done, we'll go to File, Export Movie, and I'll go for my Magix video again, and uh, give it a good file name, and just export the range only. Now, once that's done, and I see I've already gotten rid of the previous object on Track 2, so I'll go and select my new one, drag it onto Track 2, and make sure you select it, and we go to Effects, Chroma Key, Alpha, and now we see our red line, but we don't see the map. Oh, we turned it off with a mute. There we go. 
Now we got it back on and we see our red line nicely. But of course it goes far too slow so we go to speed and we're going to speed that one right up so that it gets to be about the length of what we want. And we'll set the range and render that one up. And then once that's done, we'll play it. Now that gives us a nice smooth line on the road. Moving right along, let's trace a circle this time. I'll do some cleaning up by getting rid of the previous animation and maps, but I'll keep the point file. And I'll delete the keyframes by going to Effects, Size Position, and hit the Delete Effects key. There, now we've just got our point on the screen. Now I'll go to Effects, Rotation Mirror, and make sure that the playback marker is at the beginning, and set a keyframe. Now I'll move the playback marker over towards the end, and I'll set the rotation to 380 degrees. This will give us a little bit more than a full circle. And scrubbing on the timeline a little bit, we see that the dots start to form a circle. Great. Now we should render that one up. And once the rendering's finished, we'll play that back. And we see that it forms a nice smooth circle. And this will go just slightly past 360 degrees. For a spiral, with a playback marker at the end of the object on the last keyframe, change the rotation to 1080, and that's going to give us three rotations. Now switch to size and position. Make sure we're at the very beginning, and set a keyframe so the zoom is at 100. Then we move to the end of the object on the last keyframe, and we'll decrease the zoom to, say, 50, which will create another keyframe. Now set the range. Render it, play it back. We now have an inward spiral with a point and the line decreasing in size. But the line's not smooth. So I'll increase the duration by stretching out the object to the right. You'll have to judge how far you need to go to make this thing smooth. And we'll just reset the rendering range. And then we'll go and move the keyframe that's used to be at the end, we'll move it over towards the end. You can leave a couple of seconds at the end so that the ending uh, spiral stays on the screen a little longer. And once you have that done, then you can render that one up and play it back. And we see that it's much smoother now. Once you're happy with what you've got, then do as before. Go to File, Export Movie, and export it to a Magix Movie file or something else. And then import that one. And play it back. And then you can superimpose this on an image and change the color and use Whirlpool and any other kinds of effects that you want. Now remember that we made a couple of other files, one with an arrowhead. We're going to do this one very quickly. I'll get rid of everything on the timeline here. And I'll import the short line onto track 3, and then the arrowhead onto track 4. We want to trace a line on a map with the arrowhead leading it. If we just used the arrow and echoed it, we'd have a big fat line. So now I'll drag the map onto track 1. And select the object on track 3, that's the line without the arrowhead. And I'll go to the effects and give it 100% brightness, 100% contrast, and 100% gamma. Now I'll give it the chroma key black, and finally, echo 5. Now I'll select the arrowhead on track 4, and give it the same effects, 100% brightness, contrast, and gamma. And I'll give it a chroma key black, but no echo. Now I'll group the two objects by selecting them using the control key and the left mouse button, and press on group, or the shortcut G. Now hopefully, moving one will move the other. Drag the playback marker in the keyframe area to the beginning. Make sure that size and position is selected under effects. Now drag the edit window to place the arrowhead and the line at the starting location and set a keyframe. You may have to rotate the arrowhead and the line if you want to go much more than horizontally. Move the playback marker partway along the keyframe area. 
and then move the image and we'll stop it about here set a keyframe automatically get set then I'll move the playback marker further along and then drag the arrowhead over a little bit and now we're going to need to do a rotate here this is this takes some practice I had a little trouble doing this one as you'll see and so you need to set a keyframe at the beginning for the rotation and then move it a little bit and turn it a little bit more and you should have it and then I'll just drag the uh, playback marker to the end drag the arrow down to the end of the road and I should be done now I'll render the range play it back there you go the arrow moves across the screen without echoing it looks a little ratty so I probably should have done it a little bit better and the little pieces of line leave the echo or a solid line as before I'll turn off track one I'll render it again and once that's done, I'll export it to a Magix movie format. Then I can either get rid of the source objects and import the animation, or what I'll do is I'll just open up uh, another movie. And in that movie, I'll import the animation onto track 3. And I'll import the map onto track 1. I'll select the imported line give it a chroma key alpha adjust the speed as required let's play it back to see how it looks and the black line moves along the road now let's turn it into a red line on track 4 I'll add in a, a red background and we'll take a look and see how that one works and that looks pretty nice except it goes off the road a little bit so you can just make an adjustment right here using the size and position now, uh, one last thing, rather than getting rid of the source objects, you may want to keep them, so save the project with an appropriate name and import the finished animations into another project or use a different movie like I did. Rather than an arrowhead, you could use some other image like an aircraft or a car or someone's head and have them move around. So I hope this gives you some great ideas for making animations with a point or any other object. Have fun. Bye-bye.